Hello, welcome to the Next Normal Positive Friday. My name is David and I'm your host for this regular Friday segment focusing on positive thinking. Today we're talking about positive thinking from the perspective of releasing sadness. How can you use the tools of positive thinking to release any sadness that you're feeling? And why should you, you know? Some of you may say that, you know, well, this happened and I have a right to feel sad about that. And yes, you do. As we've talked about before, all of our feelings have a right to be there. Our feelings come from our experience and our experience is our experience. So any feelings that we have do have a right to be there. But the question we always need to ask ourselves is, okay, that feeling has a right to be there, but is this feeling empowering me and serving me? And if we're feeling sad, that feeling really isn't helping us. It isn't giving us more power. And often when we're feeling sad, it's the time that we need more power to address the situation. Let's say that you have a friend that is very sick and you're feeling sad about your friend being sick and you certainly have a right to feel that way. This may be someone close to you and you don't want them to be sick. But you also need to be powerful in that situation. How can you help your friend? What can you do for your friend? Well, most important thing that you can do for your friend is to have good wishes and pure feelings. And if you are holding on to and feeding sadness, you're not having, it's removing your power to have good wishes and pure feelings. It's blocking that power. So even though you have a right to feel that way, those feelings are not empowering you. So how can you begin to transform that? Well, first of all, to recognize that those feelings, although they have a right to be there, are not, they are not empowering you. And then make a choice about what feelings you want to feed. So we had a class this morning and it was a very powerful, simple phrase that was in that class. It was, when there is happiness, your awareness of sorrow cannot be there. You are unaware of sorrow. So the first step to releasing, releasing any sorrow is to feed the happiness. And to me, the deep secret about feeding happiness is to use what is powerful and wonderful and loving within you, to use love. And we've talked about this before, that when I use love, I am fulfilling my deepest desire. My deepest desire the deepest desire of each one of us is to experience unconditional love. You know, we may want, we may have desires to be happy, to, um, to be peaceful. Um, we may have physical desires, but our deepest desire, the foundation of all desire, is that desire to experience love unconditionally. And the deep secret is that I can experience that at any moment by being that myself. So when I'm thinking from a place of unconditional love, when I'm being an embodiment of that myself, I'm experiencing that first. 
I'm fueling that feeling of unconditional love. So what does that look like? When I have good wishes, when I have patience, when my thoughts are based in cooperation, my thoughts are based in respect and regard, in acceptance, I'm using that love. And when I'm using that love, I'm fulfilling my deepest desire. And when I'm fulfilling that deepest desire, I'm feeling the happiness of that. So how does this work when we're feeling sad? Well, first step is to accept that that sadness is there, has come up. And second, to recognize that that sadness has a right to be there, but that is not serving me. And then in that recognition, I begin to feed a different thought, a different feeling. And I set the intention to use that, to use those feelings. Let me give you a practical example from my own experience. You know, Sister Jenna has probably talked to you about the new retreat center that we are, have been working on creating here in the Washington DC area um, for the past month now. And because of COVID, I have been in my house um, for a year now, rarely, rarely going out, just staying in the house by myself. Yesterday, I went out for one of the first times I have my second, my, my um, vaccination shot. I get my second one tomorrow. And so I had the opportunity to go see the new retreat place that we have been planning. And I've toured that place so many times on video and I've seen the plans and looked at aerial photographs and all of this. And I was very excited about going there and seeing the new place and all the things that have to be done. And so we went yesterday uh, with Sister Jenna and Brother Santosh and toured the place and saw everything that had to be done because there's a lot of work that has to be done there. In the garden, um, new construction that has to happen, lots of painting and um, renovations of all kinds. And we toured all of that and in my mind, I was seeing all of these things that had to be done. And I was feeling sort of overwhelmed by it. And when I got home last night, I was sort of feeling this sadness of, oh my goodness, all this stuff to be done. How will we ever get it done? All these, it seems like it's, uh, it will be a never ending, all the things to do. And I was feeding all of those thoughts and feeling this sadness from that. And the realization came to me though that, oh yes, there's many things to be done there, but do I really need to feed my worry and concern about all those things? What is it that I need to do today? What is it that's important to do right now? And perhaps maybe it's more important for me to focus just on the experience of what the place will be and not so much on all those details of what has to be done. I can address those each at its own time. But if I preoccupy my thoughts with all of that, I'm just going to feel the stress and sadness and anxiety about that. So the, what I did to begin to transform that is to make the choice not to feed all those worries 
and to focus on, on, on exactly as I said, on what the experience of the place will be. And the great teacher for me on how to do this is Sister Jenna. Looking back at yesterday, I observed how she was um, at the new place. She has many, many more things to worry about in creating it than I do, but she's not experiencing that anxiety and that concern because she's just keeping her awareness on using all of the wonderful things that are inherent within her, using that love, using that patience, using that compassion and focusing on using those qualities and making sure that I'm bringing them to each moment. And in doing that, she's, fe she's feeding that happiness and there's no room for that sadness. And the important thing about that is that when she's feeding those qualities, She's also empowered to get all the things done that need to get done. Whereas if you're feeding your anxiety and worries about everything that has to be done, you're disempowering yourself and your ability to accomplish those things. You know, sister was sitting there yesterday not so much going over the details and turning them over in, their intel in her intellect like I was. She was sitting there focusing on just having, sending good wishes and pure feelings to all the people that she's, she's talking to, being patient with them. She was definitely patient with me. And in doing that, she's empowering everyone to get this, get what we need to get accomplished, accomplished. And she's not feeling that sadness. And so this was a great lesson for me. So this is a minor thing that just all the tap, that me having sorrow about all the tasks that I need to accomplish, yes, that we need to accomplish in getting this center, this new retreat center open. What if it's something major? What if it's something like what we'd said? Uh, a friend is very sick. What if someone in your family leaves, leaves, the, leaves the body? And you feel sadness for that. How do you move beyond that sadness? I'll give you an experience from my own family. You know, I was really close to my mother and um, um, my mom had Alzheimer's disease and it progressed over many years. Um, and I compare how I was able to deal with that and to respond to that compared to the way some others in my family were able to respond to it. And the difference was that I was not preoccupying my mind with the consequences of the disease that she was experiencing. My mom actually was very happy throughout the whole experience. She wasn't, um, uh, she may have lost her ability to really talk and converse and remember, but she always had this feeling of happiness. And when you went to see her, she, she always had a smile. Um, she always was, had this look of joy and this feeling of joy that you, you would experience being around her. And so I took a lesson from that. And instead of feeding that sadness, feeding that anxiety when I was around her, I focused on all the wonderful things about her and all the wonderful memories and experiences that I had with her and focused on just the joy of being with her. And when mom finally left the body, she left very peacefully. Um, 
And I found that I really didn't feel sorrow at her leaving because I, the memories and the feelings of the joy of being with her was something that did not leave me. It was always there, always available, always eternal. The same thing with my dad, you know, when my dad left um, many, many, many years ago. And before I really understood all of this, I initially felt some sorrow at my dad's leaving, but then I recognized that everything that was wonderful and good about my dad was still with me. The wonderful lessons that he had taught me we're still there. The wonderful qualities that I can remember of him, we're still there. And so I could focus on those and feel the joy of that. And I didn't feel sorrow at his name. You know, I was talking with Brother Santos this morning um, about this idea of releasing sadness. And something very profound that he said, he was sharing from one of our teachers about sadness and say that if we have a lot of little desires, then we often can feel sadness because those desires will not always be fulfilled. And if we take, turn that around and focus on what our deepest desire is, those little desires can, will, will fade away when we work on fulfilling that deepest desire. And that deepest desire, as we said earlier, is to have that feeling of unconditional love. And that feeling of unconditional love is always available to us by being that ourselves. So if I'm feeling sad, the number one thing to do is accept that that feeling has, is, has a right to be there. Except that although that feeling it has a right to be there, recognize that it's just empowering me and not serving me, unless it's showing me what I need to let go of. And from that place of acceptance, I can make a choice to feed different thoughts, make a choice to use what's beautiful within me. Make a choice to feed the thoughts of respect, feed thoughts of regard, feed thoughts of patience, feed thoughts of understanding, feed thoughts of cooperation. And as we feed those thoughts, watch how the happiness is to grow. And as that happiness grows, our awareness of sorrow will fade. Okay. So how do we get the power to feed those thoughts that are based in love. The most powerful tool to help me do that is meditation. Meditation and regular meditation builds the strength of our awareness. Builds the strength of our awareness as ourselves, as an eternal being as an eternal being that is filled with love, filled with peace, filled with joy, 
this is the truth of us. And we can feed that truth through regular meditation. Meditation helps us to do that. First, as it builds that foundation of stillness, that we can be aware of that truth of ourselves. And in that stillness, we have space to pay attention to our thinking. And we have space to observe and to make choices about the thoughts and feelings that we have. Okay. So we'll do a little meditation together. Let's all take a nice deep breath. Let it out. Another deep breath. Let it out. Just for the next few minutes, let's just observe the air filling our mouth. Exit through the mouth and mind. Let's watch it. And observe how breathing is. I'm refreshing my spirit. Breathing out and letting go of anything. And as I observe my breath, I become aware of the stillness around the back. It's always there. In this quiet moment, let me just be best. As the observer, And in this still place, let me ask myself, how am I feeling? Is there any Let me just know that it has a right.
but also know that fear that sorrow Just the luggage that comes. And luggage is heavy. Do I really need to carry this one? And if I set it down, not pick it up, the lighter. And without that baggage of sorrow, how am I feeling? Do I feel more powerful? Do I feel more free? Do I feel more loving? Observe the difference as I sit down. Now take a step away. And allow yourself to Nurture thoughts. This glow of love is the truth. This glow of love is the power. And as I step away from the baggage of sorrow, So do you know this term, Om Shanti? 
Om can refer to a number of different things. Om could be the sound of the benevolent energy in the universe that Om. But Om also has a simpler meaning. A more profound meaning. Simply, I am. And Shanti means peace. So when we say Om Shanti, we are affirming the truth of ourselves. I am peace. We're also giving our true introduction. I am peace. This is who I am. So keep that in your awareness. The next fine time you see, you observe that seed of sorrow. Remember that the truth of you is this peaceful, loving being. And if we feed that truth, Rather than the illusions of anger, I mean, of, excuse me, of anger, of fear, of sorrow, of anxiety. If we feed that truth to ourselves, then that's what will grow. But if we hang on to that sorrow or that fear, or that anxiety, to be that, that's all right. So we'll look forward to join having you join us the next time on this co continuing conversation of how we can use our positive thinking to empower ourselves and move around, move beyond the daily challenges. Thanks for joining us.